Okay, good morning. Um, time again for the coffee and questions. And we were discussing on the forum, what do you use as a finishing tool when you're doing woodworking, whether it's on the lathe or whether it's flat work or anything like that. And you don't want to put out like a ton of finish, like through spray guns, like in HVLP. Okay, what I use is what they call a badger. I'm going to put up a picture of it. It's very inexpensive, but it's super easy to clean. It's super easy to use, and I get good, consistent results with it. So let me put up a picture, and then we'll go into a discussion, and we'll do some questions and answers about it. Just a moment. Okay, I put up some pictures here off of Amazon. They're $16.30. It gets four stars. It's got reviews, but like I said, I go to the forum. We discuss them there, and um, it's the model you know, what is it, 250-1. Okay, now, it comes with two jars, one on the gun, another one with a lid on it. Okay, now these peripheral things that come with it, I don't use those. What I use is I use a much better quality hose, and I run it right from that little brass um, male fitting up there. I run it down. I run it into an inline filter because you want to filter out moisture, of course, when you're spraying because you don't want it to affect your finish. And that's how I use this. Now, it's going to be a lot easier. I'm going to go to the question and answer part of this, and we'll go through everything and see if there's anything that, you know, any negatives or anything that people want to say about it. But as with all reviews, there are negatives, okay, but this works for me. If you use it correctly, I think it's a fantastic little airbrush. Okay, questions. No, it's not like a super detailed airbrush, like a Pache or something. Um, actually, the Pache is going to cost you three, four, five times more than this. It has a much higher quality airbrush. This is just a very simple to use, basic little airbrush that you can use on projects. But if you need something real precise, like you're pinstriping or you're making something with incredible detail, yes, you want to go with the Pache. That would, I had one. Um, I just don't use it. It sat around collecting dust because I don't do that particular kind of fine artwork. Um, how is the adjustment? Okay, look to the picture here on my left, and you'll see coming up out of the lid, there's that little cone. Well, it's spring-loaded now. As you turn that down, the spray will become almost like straight, and pretty soon you can literally shut it off by screwing it all the way down. Or as you screw it up, you start to get a fan pattern. So this is a very easy thing to adjust. You can shoot it to a piece of paper, cardboard, or something. You can play with that screw adjustment, and you can get the pattern that you want. And it works off a of siphon. I mean, you can see in the picture to my left the little hose that runs all the way down to the bottom of the container. But it's very easy. The only adjustment is that little um, cone screw coming up out of the lid. Other than that, it's your trigger finger up here. It's really easy. There's no like variable to it you press it it's on let release it it's off there's no like you know in between adjusting with that finger trigger it's single action uh, well i don't know you can use almost anything that's thin in it or you know something like with a medium viscosity maybe like you can use like airbrush paints you can use varnish you can use lacquer um you can use stain you can use dyes i've used all of these things through it and you can you know stand back you can do like a fogging pattern you can texture with it. Once you get it, once you start playing with it, and like three, four, five times, you're going to get really used to how to use it. It's very simple to use. Uh, well, the cleanup's easy. Let's say I'm using lacquer, and I got that little jar filled with lacquer, and I'm spraying, and I got to wait now because I need that lacquer to dry before I prep for the next coat. I can unscrew the top from that jar. I can put a little lid on there real quickly. And I just take this whole thing, I know it sounds abusive, I just submerge it into lacquer thinner, hold the trigger down, it cycles lacquer thinner through it, cleans the crap out of it, and I just set it to the side, let it air dry. Now I'm ready to screw it on and use it again, and I just repeat the process, and when I'm done, I do the same thing. I let it air dry, and I put it away. You're going to get people on here, they're going to comment, oh my god, you submerge it and just hit the trigger? I mean, oh my gosh. Well, there's nothing wrong with it. I've been doing it like that for a couple of years, and it's still working like the day I bought it, so I know that it works. You could do the same thing with water-based if you're using real thin paints or something. like. It's not going to spray well with thick stuff, okay? Let me tell you that. But if it's thin paint and it's water-based, you can submerge this thing into like a cup of water, hold the trigger down, take it out. You could go through the same process. If it becomes too plugged, I've used like where that cone comes up out of that lid that I'm telling you about. That's the business end where the paint's being brought up. 
and then that other cone, the air is coming out, and that's what creates that spray. But you can take a needle, a real thin needle, and go up and down through that little cone, and it's not going to hurt anything. People say, oh, well, it's not good to do to spraying tips. This is an inexpensive spray gun, okay, and you can do it. I've done it. I've done it over and over and over. It unclogs anything that manages to stick in there after you're cleaning. There's not much maintenance to these. It's very easy. Um, okay, how do, I, how do I know what pressure to use? I have a pressure regulator. Um, so I go over to my pressure regulator and I probably use anywhere from 22 to 34 PSI. It's not meant for high PSIs. It's meant to use with very low PSIs. A lot of times 20, 25 is, that's gonna work for me. If I've got something in there that's a little bit thicker or I'm having a little bit of difficulty and I crank that pressure up a little bit, you're going to be fine. I don't, I, I wouldn't go past like 34 or so or 35, whatever. So anywhere from like 22, lower than 22, it just doesn't seem to put out jack squat. So that's a, that's a range for you to play around in. Set it at 22 as an example. Use it on the cardboard like I was telling you, then adjust your pressure like two or three PSI at a time. You'll hit the sweet spot. It's that simple to do. Can you use it on larger projects? Well, to a point, okay. Um, I have another one you can do an Amazon search. I think I did a YouTube on it. It's called the Critter. A Critter is good for large projects, um, and this is good for small projects. I wouldn't try to use this on anything too large. It's not, it's not meant for that. It's not going to be good for it. You're not going to be happy with the results of your finish. On smaller stuff, yes, it works perfect for me. And I don't need any high-end, expensive spray gun just to tell people I got one. My finishes come out perfect once you get used to using this. An inexpensive, basic spray gun, this is what I would use. There is nothing wrong with the hose that comes with it. It is doable. You might have to get an adapter. You should get an inline disposable uh, filter so that you keep moisture out of what you're doing. But, you know, that's up to you. I mean, it's only a few extra bucks if you're going to order this online to get a better quality braided hose, uh, which I would encourage you to do because these little plastic flimsy ones, they tend to start having problems and crack real easily very quickly. The braided one I had, I've had it for years and I've never had a problem with it. Okay, what it comes with over here, you're going to see there's that little round weird looking lid on the bottom left that's for hooking up to an aerosol like spray can i wouldn't do it it doesn't work it really sucks i wouldn't even try it it is american made yes it's got a one-year warranty according to what amazon's um, description says where can you get you know specialty you know kinds of paints and stuff from try michael's or hobby lobby um, the jar size they're well they're two and three quarter ounce um, jars but the, I mean it's plenty for a small project and then you can always pour back what you don't use I would tell you for small projects definitely use it this is my review I hope you folks enjoyed it hit subscribe ask me questions drop a comment and I'll see you on the next video have a good day everybody bye bye